In the last video, we covered that California, Arizona, and Nevada are all getting their water supply from either Lake Mead or Lake Powell, and it's declining at a rapid rate. So in this video, we'll take a look at the top four reasons why, but before we do so, let's take a look at the data to get a better idea of the current situation. Starting with Lake Powell, the first reservoir in the system and the closest to reaching the minimum power level or the level at which we can no longer generate electricity, stands at 3,523 feet providing only a 33 foot buffer between that and that minimum level. What's crazy is that Lake Powell basically maintained its full pool status for nearly 24 years between 1974 and 1998, and since 98, it has lowered 177 feet. The second reservoir in the system, Lake Mead, experienced similar effects over the same period as it only stands 45 feet above the minimum power level. From 1983 to 2000, Lake Mead only dropped 11 feet total, but since 2000, it's dropped 148 feet to now critical levels. So what got us in this mess? Was it foreign farming in Arizona, population growth in the Southwest, or was it those lush golf courses in the desert? Let's take a look at the numbers and find out. If you're enjoying this video, make sure to leave a like, or if you got something to say, leave a comment. And if you wanna see a follow-up video on this situation, make sure to subscribe that one click really helps keep me motivated to make more videos. I will disclose though that my channel is typically on my garage builds. So if you don't wanna see this buggy get upgraded with independent rear suspension, along with an upgrade from eight horsepower to 60, don't subscribe, this channel might not be for you. Factor number one, population growth in the Southwest. Now most of us agree that population growth in the desert is a bad idea. What was the population growth in the Southwest enough to justify this change in water supply? From 1990 to 2007, the population in the Southwest grows 24% to 45.3 million people. And then we gained another 11% since then to a staggering 50.4 million people. Now we have gained 15.8 million people in this 32 year period from 1990 to 2022. But in a similar 40 year period from 1950 to 1990, we gained 23.1 million people and reached full pool levels in both Lake Mead and Lake Powell in the process. So although population growth is part of the equation, it doesn't seem to be the leading reason to why we're almost out of water. Factor number two, agriculture, water use. Now without a doubt, agriculture is a high consumer of water in this region, but the data really doesn't show that agriculture is the reason why we experience a sudden drop in water. For example, in Arizona, their agriculture data has shown that they actually have consumed less water on an annual basis since 1990. Now, to be clear, it's not that they're using less water overall, it's just that they're using less out of the Colorado River, and they're replacing it with a lot of their deep aquifers in place of this water. So taking a look at the data, it doesn't seem fair to place the emphasis of the blame on the farming industry, as they've been steady consumers of this water since 1980, and doesn't really explain why there would be a sudden drop from 2000 onward. So let's jump to factor number three, golf courses. It pains me to say this, but are lush golf courses to blame? Well, in 2019, Arizona golf courses used up 450,000 gallons of water a day. Now, all this water isn't coming from the Colorado River, as a lot of it is groundwater, but if it was, it would amount to 5% of the total water that Arizona is allotted. So the data really isn't there to place all the blame on these golf oases in the desert causing the drop in Lake Mead and Powell since the 90s, as the total theoretical usage is only around 5% per state. So let's jump into the final factor here, but before we do... Are you like me and get stomach issues when facing stress and anxiety? Yeah! Check out Mindful Mushroom on Amazon. It's a natural mood enhancer and stress reducer formulated with lion's mane, chamomile, and other key ingredients to not only reduce stress up here, but with our transparent probiotic blend, you could also reduce stress in your gut as well. Now in complete transparency, I will say this is my personal supplement brand. So don't trust me. Trust our four and a half star rating on Amazon and their no questions asked return policy. Back to factor number four, loss of runoff efficiency due to climate change. And stay with me on this one. Whether we cause global warming with emissions or it's just a natural earth cycle, we still need to be prepared to weather the effects. Since 1994, we have recorded 17 out of 20 warmest years on record. And at the same time, we've been experiencing a mega drought in the Southwest. It's important to note that drier doesn't always mean warmer. They're totally independent. For example, we experienced dry conditions from the 1950s to the 1970s, and we were able to start filling both Lake Mead and Lake Powell at the same time. Granted, the drain on the Colorado River wasn't as high due to a lower population, 
but agriculture was still running strong, which we covered was the main consumer anyway. So the mega drought often gets blamed, but the drought data really isn't drastic enough to explain the sudden water drop. So let's revisit warming temperatures. Over the same period we saw this sudden water drop, we also experienced a sudden spike in temperatures. And scientists have determined that with each degree of Fahrenheit, we lose two to 5% in runoff efficiency, or basically our ability to capture water from rain and snow melt. They estimate that since 2000, we have lost between 20 and 60% in runoff efficiency, which makes it increasingly more difficult to replenish the supply of water in these lakes. If the increasing temperature trend continues, which is the current forecast, we will have to find some creative solutions as a wet year won't provide the relief it was once able to. So that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to leave a like. And if you want to see my prediction of what will happen if these resources run dry, make sure to subscribe.